What's up, dude? Yeah, no, I just got out of that new scream. Sorry, I just heard something. What's up YouTube friends? My name is Danny Jones and welcome to Jones Vibes. First and foremost, thank you so much for clicking on this video and if you enjoy it, please go ahead and hit that stab button, I mean like button, and then go ahead and click subscribe as well as hit that notification bell. That'll keep you up to date when I make more content. And Scream is finally here. Well, technically it's been here since 1996, but for all of us franchise fans, Scream 5 is finally here. High five! <laughs> I am so stoked that we got this film so early on in this year. It was definitely one of my most anticipated of 2022. And also, I'm just really impatient, so. But before Ghostface breaks into your home and then calls your cell phone, just know that this is a spoiler review. And so if you haven't seen this movie, turn off your phone and cut your landline right now. But if you have seen it, like me, hello, Sydney. And to start, I'm just curious how many of you out there are hardcore fans of this Scream franchise. Please let me know down in the comments because my journey with Scream kind of started with watching the first movie and enjoying it. But then when I met my wife, we binged all four of them and that's when the magic really clicked for me. One could say it really stabbed me in the heart Heart, if you know what I mean. But now I've rewatched all of them like a zillion times. I'm a huge fan. And so Kevin Williamson and Wes Craven's genius will always live on in my household. And rest in peace to Wes. And props to them for creating Ghostface. He's arguably my favorite slasher villain of all time. But with all that being said, I really had some expectations for this film. And when I heard that Radio Silence, Matt and Tyler, the directors of Ready or Not, were on board, I definitely got excited. That movie's awesome if you haven't seen it. And Seth Cohen from The O.C. is in it, so obviously it's great. Hey, he's also in Scream 4. But I went to this movie midday at Alamo Draft House, and my initial thoughts are that it was definitely a Scream baby. And as established by Randy's niece, Mindy, in the film, this is a requel. So it's not exactly a sequel, and it's not exactly a reboot. It's a sort of retelling of the original while honoring the legacy of the Scream franchise. And it does just that. We come back to Woodsboro 25 years later, and there's a girl alone in her home, and the phone is ringing. Yes! And if you were expecting Drew Barrymore, you didn't get her. You got Tara Carpenter, who's played by Jenna Ortega. And this opening scene kills it, no pun. It gets very bloody and very tense. And I also love the immediate nods to how modern horror has changed. Nowadays, there's this thing called elevated horror. Films like Hereditary and The Babadook and The Witch. So it kind of puts us right into 2022, 2021, this era. But Tara actually survives this opening scene, which is different, and this brings back her sister, Sam, as well as her boyfriend, Dennis Quaid. Wait a minute. You're not Dennis Quaid. Who are you? You're his son, aren't you? Jack Quaid plays Richie Kirsch, and after watching The Boys on Amazon, I just, I love this actor. And also, turns out, Sam is Billy Loomis's daughter. Yeah, her mom had her in high school, and ultimately Sam found out, and that's why their parents divorced. And Sam never decided to tell Tara about any of this. And so this leads to some really, really well-acted emotional scenes between these two sisters. And the fact that they're sisters is very believable. Like, these two girls are acting their hearts out. And Tara also has a whole friend group in high school, and so we're introduced to all these new young characters, and I gotta say, they held it down. We have Mindy and Chad Meeks Martin, or the twins, and they're Randy's niece and nephew, which I thought was fun. And you also see his sister there for a second, Randy's sister. And Chad has a girlfriend named Liv McKenzie. It's kind of a new relationship, so she's new to the friend group. Dylan Minnette, who I'm always happy to see, plays Wes. And he's actually former deputy and now Sheriff Hicks' son. And last but not least, we have Amber Freeman, who is Tara's best friend. She's played by Mikey Madison. But all around, I feel like this movie does a great job handling the humor. It was just funny enough while introducing a bunch of new characters as well as maintaining the feel of the franchise. However, we didn't forget Ghostface is back. And pretty early on, he murders a very well-acted character named Vince in the parking lot of this bar. And just seeing Ghostface murder somebody out in the open in a parking lot was pretty fun. And also, while visiting her sister in the hospital, Sam is attacked. But she survives, and Ghostface gets away, and so where does this bring us all? Back to me. 
For me, David Arquette is the standout legacy character of this film. His character is washed up at this point, and he's forced into retirement, and him and Gail have clearly separated. Now she's in New York on a morning show. And so although he seems a little bit more hardened, he's still the lovable dope that we know from the past movies. And so he's alerted to these murders by Sam and Richie. They come to his house, and he decides to reach out to Sydney and Gail and tell them not to come back, so obviously they're gonna come back. And then, like I said, we have this scene where all the rules of the movie are read out by Mindy, who's Randy's niece. And this honestly was one of my favorite parts of the film. You can tell all of these young actors are so comfortable with each other by now. And it was just hilarious. Like, they made fun of Star Wars fandom, by referencing Knives Out, which was directed by Ryan Johnson. And the latest stab is Stab 8, which is clearly referencing The Last Jedi, which is like the most divisive Star Wars film of all time. So, But unfortunately, this friend group does have to have some casualties. And Dylan Minnette, you're up to bat. His mom, Sheriff Hicks, is at home and she's gonna go get some sushi. So she leaves and the killer calls her on the way to sushi. And so we have this really funny, intense scene of Wes walking around the house and there's all these classic horror tropes. Like, is the killer gonna be in the mirror? No. Is the killer behind the door? No. And eventually Sheriff Hicks gets home and Ghostface actually kills her in her front yard, out in the open again. And then we have this really gruesome death where Wes gets stabbed in the neck by Ghostface. He certainly was up to his neck in danger. And then to try to save the sheriff, all the cops leave the hospital that Tara's at. Perfect. And so Sam and Dewey race over to the hospital, but not before we get this dope lights out scene in the hospital. This was probably one of the scariest sequences to me. And then Sam and Dewey save the day, but not before Dewey makes the ultimate sacrifice. And maybe people are uncomfortable with Dewey dying, but I thought they really gave him his moment. He's been stabbed in every film and he always survives. But in the end, this is Scream and nobody is safe. Unless you're Sidney Prescott. And speaking of her, this next scene we get Sydney and Gail back together, which was so badass. I loved how Courtney and Nev really took a back seat in this film, but then they maintained the feel of their characters. But also right around here is when I ran into really my only issue with this film, and it's the pacing. There were definitely a few scenes that lasted a little too long for me, and I'm not used to that with Scream. All four of Wes's movies really just moved. There was never a lull, but I kind of got it with this film because there's so much to set up, especially if they're planning on having sequels. And when it does pick back up, it picks up. And it made me pretty much forget completely about any lull. Sam, Richie, and Tara are trying to flee out of town and Tara loses her inhaler. And so they have to go to Amber's house to get it. And this is the classic house from the final act of the first film. So it was crazy being back here and they did such a good job rebuilding this thing. And there's a party going on, which seems like a pretty good deal for the final act of this movie. Chad, played by Mason Gooding, has a terrific scene with Ghostface that definitely had me on the edge of my seat. And side note, his story is actually really cool. He wrote this paper at NYU about why the Scream franchise should be rebooted, and then he showed it to Radio Silence, the two directors, and then without even screen testing him, they just gave him the part. They gave him a call and just said, you're in Scream 5. So that's dope. But once we're in the house, we're in the house. Mindy has this great mirroring scene to Randy in the original, and I just thought that was so creative and funny. And she gets stabbed, so you think maybe she's dead. And then Liv ends up getting shot in the face by Amber. And Amber reveals herself to be one of the killers. Oh, snap! But when she truly turns into a villain, her performance is really quirky and really funny. Eerily, it kind of echoes Stu a little bit, which I liked. And then Sid and Gail end up showing up and Amber shoots Gail in the stomach, but she continues to press on. And so then we have this showdown. And I have to say the reveal of the killers was a little obvious to me, but they did enough to make me second guess myself throughout the movie. From the beginning, I really had strong suspicions about Richie, but it wasn't until he stabbed Sam that I was like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, he is the killer. And when they move into the kitchen, it was awesome. It was just like the original, they're in this kitchen, and it was just perfect for this like reboot, requel thing. And then Sydney and Gail lighting Amber on fire was hilarious. And then the showdown between Sam and Richie was awesome. Throughout the movie, Sam or Melissa Barrera has been seeing her father, Billy, like in the mirror and stuff. And so you're kind of seeing that she's a little psychotic and she's like seeing her dad in her head and he's a serial killer and he's all covered with blood. And so we have this cool little father-daughter moment where like she gets to channel all that rage and her serial killer tendencies and just unleash on Richie like it's 
brutal. And Jack Quaid does a hell of a good job performing this death scene. He's definitely now a staple villain for me in this franchise. And he was just great throughout the whole movie. But Tara actually ends up really saving the day. She shoots Amber in the head at the end, and no one's ever really dead until you shoot them in the head. And after that, we kind of just coast off into the night. The twins both actually survived, which was a big relief for me. And then there's this sweet scene between Sid and Sam, and it's really a, a pass the baton type moment. And a good highlight line is Sid basically saying that she always survives. And we'll probably be saying the same thing about Sam one day. And Gail has now lost Dewey, and she has a very sweet and sentimental moment where she's talking about how she's not gonna write about these murders and highlight anything that they did. She's instead gonna write about a sheriff that loved to help people. It was a great send off for Dewey, as well as probably Gail. Like if she does pop up in a sequel, I'd love to just see her kind of like on the background on a TV screen, but she doesn't actually come back into the film. But that does wrap it up. And I just wanna say that I really, really enjoyed this movie. You can tell that a lot of love went into it. And it lived up to the hype it honored Wes, like at the end it says for Wes, and it also set itself up for future success. And I also think it's bringing a whole new generation to Scream. Like there's probably a lot of young people that are going to this movie and seeing it for the first time, and it's easy enough to follow along, and I guarantee that this is gonna introduce a lot of people to the first four films. Also, once again, Melissa Barrera and Jenna Ortega were just incredible. Both the sisters survive, and so I really hope to see them again in another Scream movie because they, they were just awesome. And yeah, I really, I really hope that they do make a sequel because in this day and age, you gotta have a sequel, baby. But what did you think? Did this requel live up to the hype for you? Please just feel free to let me know down in the comments and start an open dialogue. Like, I love Scream so much, so I'd love to talk about it with you. And if you did enjoy this review, please go ahead and click that like button for me. That helps me get my name out there, as well as hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you back to watch more of these reviews and join this community. But yeah, that was Scream 5, or Scream. And it definitely had some good vibes. So thank you so much for listening, and I will see you next time. <laughs>